I'm Raider from the Sentinel Initiative channel. This time I'm bringing this little series of mine to a close. Within this video I'm summarising everything that I have discussed so far, however I would suggest watching all of the previous parts to get a full explanation with evidence. Links to these videos will be in the description. So without further ado, let's delve into the lore of human hearts one last time. Let's get this summary over with. In part one, I looked into how Sora might be time traveling every time he was defeated. The result is Sora having multiple copies of his own heart within himself. These may melt together or appear as one. I suggested this collection of hearts could become a new Kingdom Hearts or the original Kingdom Hearts upon the instance that Sora's heart couldn't return to a previous version of himself. In part two, I reviewed all of the opening cutscenes of almost every game in the series. I explored each of them for possible hints towards the events of the game in an attempt to provide evidence for Sora being able to see the future. I also discussed the Sora's bloodshot gazing eyes glitch and my opinions of the Azora situation. Part 3 was focused about possible links between Sora and the Dark Inferno. I made the connection between Sora's anti slash rage form getting more powerful in a potentially short span of time and the idea proposed in part 1. The result would be a growing amount of darkness within Sora's heart. Maybe it will eventually become enough darkness to become the Dark Inferno. Also, I would just like to thank Mr. Skatebox09 for leaving these two comments on that video. They were correct in saying that the Dark Inferno is connected to Aventus, especially seeing as we encountered Dark Inferno X, a weaker variant of the Dark Inferno, with Aventus's heart. This reminded me of something that I was going to mention in the video, but forgot to include. Ven's heart had already been separated into light and darkness, meaning there shouldn't have been any darkness present. So where did the Dark Inferno X come from? Well, maybe it could have been Sora's own darkness that had bled into Ventus over the years that Ventus's heart hid within Sora's. Just a suggestion, but it does provide another link between the two. In the previous part, I took a look into the Master of Masters, doing my best to convey my theory that the Masters of Masters could be Sora's true and future nobody. During this video, I also touched on how the Book of Prophecies may only exist to lie and to coerce others into believing a false future, making them try to avoid it, leading to them becoming the root cause of that originally fake future in the end. The book is either a self-fulfilling prophecy, or just completely false. Probably a bit of both. Then I discussed a tad about what I think the Master's goal is, which I believe is to recomplete himself by taking Sora's original heart. With all of that out of the way, let's pull it all together. Let's start at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. I suggested in part 2 that Sora is eternally trapped in a cycle of fighting against Azura. Each time Sora is defeated, his heart just returns until he gives up, hence the defeat ending only plays when you choose the give up option instead of retry. And as anyone who has played Kingdom Hearts knows, Sora never gives up. He would keep on going until he won. What does this mean? Well, Sora's collection of hearts would continue to grow rapidly, even more so if this kept happening over and over again, despite the outcome. So why? Who gains from any of this? Well, no one to be honest, not immediately at least. I believe that this is actually a setup to simply grow that collection of hearts within Sora, creating a massive pool of light and darkness. I believe that this combat is a setup by the Master of Masters to ensure that events go as they have already gone. This actually makes some sense. This explains why we see the Masters of Masters in Shibuya, I think that's how it's pronounced, in the secret cutscene at the end of King Hearts 3. Also, he would have needed a method to guarantee that Sora's collection of hearts was large enough to be a Kingdom Hearts. Then, when the time was right, the Master would attack Sora. This also explains why Yuzora does what he does to Sora in the defeat cutscene. If Sora is unable to die, or his heart is unable to leave the current body, then the master cannot kill Sora because then he would be creating a potentially cataclysmic paradox, as if my theory is true, 
Kingdom Hearts might never exist. But the Master would be prepared for this, as he's already experienced it. So it is likely a looping event that happens to both in different ways. For Sora, it's all real. But for Yuzora, it's more like a reoccurring dream. So what's next? How about what the Master's plan is? I'm fairly certain that the Master intends to take Sora's first heart. The heart that remembers everything and has been there since the beginning. I also believe this is what will cause Sora to be unable to time travel. If the Master removes this heart, then the collection will be incomplete, of a vital part missing with the loss of the original. At this point, the Master sends Sora back to the beginning, so that Sora can become him and split into his three parts. Sora's remaining hearts become Kingdom Hearts. The expelled darkness within him becomes a dark inferno, leaving his body to become the Master of Masters and ensure the past. The Master of Masters would then either continue to call himself the Master of Masters, or would take up Sora's name, which would then also explain why Yuzora knows Sora's name but doesn't recognise him. Maybe the Master of Masters is the Sora that Yuzora is familiar with. Now that the Master has recompleted himself, he would likely find himself pursued by the Dark Inferno. I would imagine that it would also want to recapture its original heart, as it would be able to contain a small piece of light likely resulting in the clash between the Master of Masters and the Dark Inferno. The confrontation of his nobody and Heartless. The Master of Masters would probably win to be honest, meaning that now he would be fully recompleted. Possibly. I'm not 100% sure of this as he is already recompleted but is missing the majority of his light and darkness only having regained one Sora heart's worth of both. I know, apparently Sora's heart is now a measure of light and darkness. This leaves only one question. How? How would the Master of Masters extract the one heart, and how would he send Sora back in time? To answer the first, I want to take a look at that box that Luxu has hidden for most of this series. I reckon that the answers we seek lie within. If you throw your mind back to Kingdom Hearts 2, you may recall that Anson tried to use a device to contain the Kingdom Hearts that Organization 13 had made. This guy was also mentioned in the last video. Let's just say that it didn't end well for him. However, the device itself was able to contain a number of hearts before exploding. Seeing as the Master only wants one, it stands to reason that he may use a similar device and put that inside of the box for safekeeping, knowing that no one would ever find it until everything was ready. But this still leaves the question of how would the Master of Masters send Sora back in time for all of this to actually work? Well, I don't have an answer for that one, unfortunately. However, I would imagine that it might be in a similar way to how Maleficent ended up going back in time between Kingdom Hearts 1 and Union Cross. Although we have no idea why that happened, only that it did. In the end, Sora would return, but he would probably be an entirely different person if the Master of Masters is anything to go by. It would be weird to be honest, and I can't imagine how everyone would react. I mean, it could break Kari's heart if he became so different and became a darker version of himself. I don't mean fully over to the darkness, just having found a perfect balance. So further than Riku ever went, but less so than, uh, well, it isn't really a perfect representation of this. Maybe Terra just before being possessed by Xehanort? Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, with that, that's it. That is nearly everything that I've got to say in regards to this theory. No more evidence that I need to discuss. There is plenty more to cover if I had the time. The origins of Kingdom Hearts discovered and explained. Who's Heartless, the Dark Inferno? is derived from previous forms. The Master of Masters identified discerned by looking into his actions and his use of words, and most importantly, what might have been in that box. I mean, I really want to know. Well, at least my views on all of the above. I may be right. I may be wrong. In truth, we may never know. And, on and honestly, I really hope I'm wrong. If I just so happen to figure it all out, 
Then I have just spoiled the next phase of Kingdom Hearts games for everyone who has watched his videos. And I would truly feel awful about that because I love this series and I hate getting spoilers for it. But before I make my exit, I just want to say what the consequences of this outcome might be. If the Master of Masters is in fact Sora's nobody and he manages to recomplete himself, then he might become the greatest guardian of the worlds, or the greatest threat to the light. Just imagine if in the next phase we don't play as Sora, but as a different character who is trying to stop whatever it is that the Master is planning. If this is the case, we could end up with Kairi being the one who has to put an end to Sora, forever. I hope it doesn't come to that, because that would make the Roxas boss fight seem light on the emotionally painful spectrum in comparison. But now that I think about it, I kind of want to see it. Anyway, that's it from me now. This series has been a blast to make. Sure, it has also been a nightmare, but that is partially my own fault. I would like to thank everyone who has watched this and or any of the videos in this series, and even more so to those that have commented. It is very much appreciated. With that said, I'll see you all in the next video. I think I'm going to take a break from Kingdom Hearts for a while. As much as I love the series, making these videos has been exhausting. I mean, I just need a break from it all really. Wait a minute. Is there something I'm forgetting? Oh yeah. I forgot I pre-ordered that one. Guess I'll be seeing all of you guys tomorrow when we get straight back into it. Until then, I'm Raider. I hope you guys stay safe and goodbye.